Okay, so I call this the Observer Tool. It originates from uh, my time with Muji, Self Inquiry. So, Self Inquiry is the practice of what am I, or who am I, or what am I, or who am I. Uh, so the thing that I traditionally use, I should use something else, shouldn't I? Okay, let me use this phone, something different. So this is a this is a mobile phone, right? Now a mobile phone is an object. I see this object. I there is observing of the object. Now my my observation of the object means that this object has a limited shape. Yeah. Limited shape and it's being observed. So if there's observation of a limited object, like uh, is anybody this mobile phone? Is anyone confused? No, everyone's saying no, they're not the mobile phone. But everyone is observing the mobile phone. So the observer of the mobile phone is more limitless than the limits of the phone. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, everyone's here. So, if there is an object, that which observes the object is not the object. And the observer of the object can't, must be more limitless, because that which is observing this limit must be more limitless than to be able to recognize that this is limited. That the observer of the limited must be more limitless mm -hmm. than that which is limited. And if something is observed with detachment, it's clearly recognized that it cannot be me. You know, there's clear detached observing that this is an object that has nothing to do with me. The essence of me is more limitless than the object. So that was quite easy. Everyone agreed they're not the mobile phone. Okay, so the next thing would be to inquire. Um, now, here's the thing. What if, like, what if uh, a, pe a pen, which is a passing object, was suddenly in front of you, and if it was in front of you, would you be the pen, this passing object? Mm -mm. No. So that which observes something that is passing is not the thing that is observed that is passing. Are, we, are you with, is everyone with me? Yes. So even if something comes in and is right in front of you, and you see it right in front of you, it's still not you. And even if it passes away, you're still here even when it's gone. Oh, we're all good, good. We're all in agreement. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the basics of self-inquiry, is to recognize if there is an object, if it's, if it's observed with detachment, it's recognized that the object is not one and, uh, and the observer is more limitless. And that's an experiential realization. Mm -hmm. Notice that these things were not mental things. They were experienced. Yeah, there, there's a spiritual experience that one isn't the mobile phone. No, doesn't need think, no thinking required to work it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we have thoughts. You know, thoughts are coming and going. Mm. Thoughts. Now, like, one can have a thought like, I don't know, a thought like, I need more money in my bank account, and they suddenly come in. But, and, then it, and then it passes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And sometimes one can have no thoughts for a while, and then sometimes there can be lots of thoughts or sometimes hardly any thoughts. And all of this is being observed. Is the observer, is the observer that watches thoughts come and go, is the observer a thought? No. Okay, good. So it's clear. One is not thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts can come and go. This, this has to be an experience that even if there are thoughts here or no thoughts here, it has nothing to do with what I am. This, myself is not a thought. This, is, this can be experienced. And then it's realized that the thoughts, you don't have to identify with them. They're not, not, not important to the sense of self. And then images and memories from childhood or whatever, or food items can come and go. But these are observed as well, coming and going. Images can come and go. It can be light or dark, and this can come and go. Is the observer an image? No. no, it's not an image. Okay, so thoughts can come and go, and they're not what one is. And image. What about the body? The body. If there is an experience 
of, uh, let's say that if there's an experience of body in this moment, like there's an experience, oh, this shape, you know, seems to be, there seems to be a shape. Is one the body? If one is experience, if one is identified with body, if one is experiencing now that one is stuck in this shape, mm -hmm. yeah, if you've got like a, con and there might be things here or here or whatever, and there's an experience of the limits of the body. What have you got amputated? Well, we're not using the intellect. I'm, I'm trying to, we're trying to go for, we're trying to go for experience. <laughs> We're not trying to make this uh, into an intellectual. We're trying to see through, see through the experience. I mean, this, this is an exercise. If there is the experience that one is limited to the to the area of the body or body parts or whatever it is, then like one isn't the mobile phone. Some, the observer of the the mobile the limits of the mobile phone is not the mobile phone. So if there is it, sometimes when things are enmeshed with, or they're meaningful, they can, it can feel like one is the mobile phone, if one is too interested, invested, mm. or has believed it for long enough. Mm. But actually, if there is an experience of the body now, then it would be to, to ask, you know, something is observing the limits of the body, which is not the body. There is a detached observer of the body. Mm. Yeah. So this is, a, if anyone's stuck in their body, Something is observing the body which is not the body. If you're, and I, this is an experiential thing, it's not a mental question. Can you be the observer of the body? Can you experience that which is observing the body? The observer of the body. Nod your head, nod your head or say yes. If, okay. So the observer of the body is not the body. Yeah. And the observer of the body, since the body, can, you know, like a pen can pass, mm -hmm. or the experience of the body can be here or not be here, but the observer is always here. Yes? Yes. So, okay, good. So, this is, this is a good group, isn't it? So, we're not the thoughts, mm -hmm. we're not the body, we're not these things that are passing. Then the next thing is, so we're doing really well, it's a very good group. So, and these are experiential things, these are not mental questions, these are experiences. To experience that which is observing thoughts is not thoughts. So one can now discount that whether thoughts are here or not doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's not what I am. Whether there's an experience of identification with the body or not, it's not me. The observer of the body is not the body. Okay? Now, if the experience now then in any way is limited, let's say it's not the thoughts and it's not the body, but there's a feeling that I'm like this big ball of, limp, of big, big expansive ball, yeah, could be a big expansive ball. Then it would be like, well, what's, if it has limits, what's observing the limits of the expansiveness, yeah? So let's say it becomes like quite, oh, I'm not the body, I'm not the thoughts, I'm like filling this room up. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be okay, but what's observing the limits of this room? It was the next thing. Is the observer of the limits of this room limited to the limits of the room? So take it out. So if there's a limit to the experience, then see what, be the observer of the limit and bust, and then you transcend each limit and you experience, this is, none of this is mental, you start to experience states which are more and more limitless. Yeah, and are not, and then these states now, if you reattach or re-identify, you go back into contraction. Mm -hmm. If you identify with your thoughts or identify with the body, you'll quickly zoom back in. Mm -hmm. So just unhook, and what's observing that? Uh, uh, go to the observer. And if, however you are, is there an observer of that? Is it, if it's very expansive, what's observing the expansiveness? Keep doing it. And keep, every time you re-hook or re-identify, go back, unhook. And then your, eventually, as you keep doing this, your sense of self will change. Your habitual sense of self will get less and less limited. The more, and if you devote yourself to this practice, uh, which is traditionally called self-inquiry, I call it the observer tool, then these habitual hooks will get less and less frequent. And then your sense of self will become more and more limitless, and that will be a more and more natural state of being. Also time. If one is experiencing time, 
something is observing the experience of time. That which observes time, which has no interest in time, is timeless. Yeah. So if you forget being interested in time and you observe that which is, has no interest in time, then there, no time exists. Okay. So, so you can bust. Also, another one to do is, is there an experience of location? Is there an experience of self being located? If there's a sense like you're located in this part of the room, what's observing the location in this part of the room? Is that which observes location in location? So then that way you bust being located in any particular place. Okay, you just do. If there's a sense of location, what's observing the sense of location? Is the observer of location in location? Is that which observes location in location? You have to do this experientially. Uh, and then you, you, you bust that myth as well, you see. So uh, that, and I'm going to put the camera off now.